Hi, I'm George Crump, Lead Analyst with Storage Switzerland. Thank you for joining us today. You know, as we talk to IT professionals, there's some confusion over solid state disks or SSDs. Uh, and there's a tendency to think that these are all created the same and there's really no difference between them because they're just memory. But that's really not the case. Uh, joining me on the light board to discuss this is uh, Cameron Crandall. He is with uh, Kingston. Cameron, thanks for joining us today. Thanks for having me. So let's talk about a little bit. What makes uh, SSDs different? So uh, the way we build an SSD for a client machine, like a notebook or desktop, what we work on every day, mm -hmm. uh, versus how we build an SSD for a data center application are, are vastly different. Okay. Uh, the workloads are very different, as you can imagine. Um, a server workload is sometimes 100% duty cycle, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. Right. Uh, when we work on our computers throughout the day, it, that's a very different type of application. Sure. Got tons right? of idle time. Right. 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 Sure. So uh, what we focus on is delivering performance consistency as it relates to IOPS delivery mm -hmm. and latency consistency. And I can kind of show you what that is right Okay, here. great. So what we do is we will run uh, performance scripts that we've created uh, at Kingston, and we will look at every I.O. Um, over a, a, a very long test pattern. Okay. And what we want to see is we want to see nice straight lines of, of, of consistency, okay? So you're not going to always going to have 100% perfect consistency. But what we don't want to see is a sawtooth pattern, or what we sometimes call a Christmas tree pattern, in our I.O. delivery. Okay. And, and because I, I assume at that point that means that I'm impacting application performance, at least from a consistency perspective. Is that right? Absolutely. So what this means is what we have over here are IOPS. Right. Okay. Um, and uh, we've got big swings in performance. So uh, at one point I may be doing... Uh, uh, 50,000 IOPS, mm -hmm. and then it's dropping down to 20,000 IOPS. Right. It's going up to 60,000 IOPS and coming back down. What we prefer to do is maybe deliver around 32,000 or 30,000 IOPS consistently over that right. workload. Because that becomes predictable and you can build your application around Exactly. It. Right, okay. And you, we've got customers that have uh, service level agreements that they guarantee to their customers, mm -hmm. and they can't have this sawtooth or Christmas tree pattern yeah. in, in that I.O. delivery. Makes total sense. So what are some things that you guys do specifically to uh, you know, guarantee that level of consistency? So a lot of uh, a lot of what makes this this straight line and the consistency happen happens goes into the firmware design. Okay. So we've got to sacrifice something to be able to get this I/O consistency. Gotcha. And typically it's peak levels of performance. In the data center, we're not trying to reach a a, a, a big number on a data sheet, right? Mm -hmm. That's that's not the goal there. Right. What we're trying to do is we're trying to be as as consistent as possible in that I/O delivery. Okay. So a lot of work goes into how the firmware is actually tuned on the SSD. Um, what sort of what we do with host commands that come into the drive? Okay. Um, all of that is taken into account uh, from a firmware perspective. On the hardware side, we put uh, large DRAM caches on the SSDs. Okay. So SSDs write typically to a cache write buffer. Sure. So we give that a nice big buffer to work with, and that helps smooth out these lines. Okay. So that the, the bigger the buffer, the the more inbound writes you can handle at any given time, right? Correct. And the more consistent we can make that I/O delivery. Okay. And Great. latency would be the same way. So I can we can draw the same thing for latency. Mm -hmm. So uh, if if I've got uh, you know latency cruising along here, it's maybe an average of you know sub five milliseconds, and then it jumps up to five hundred milliseconds. Mm -hmm. And then it comes back down to you know to five milliseconds. Then we've we've got a problem here because sure. this this ends up showing up in the application somewhere. Yeah, absolutely. So when we go in and we're competing uh, against our competitors and our customer sites, mm -hmm. our data center customers are doing this testing. Okay. The data center customers gotten much more sophisticated over the years. We used to be able to give them a good client level drive and they'd run with it and they loved it. Mm -hmm. uh, today they're a little bit more knowledgeable. They're peeling back the onion on these and they know that these inconsistencies exist right. and they're testing for it. And is it because the, the what we've seen just changed from applications that were pounding these things so much harder on a consistent basis now? Is that the kind of the driver for that? It is. What you're seeing is you know SSDs are being used in more applications in the data center than they ever were before. Right. You know, in the early days, you know SSDs were a little bit unknown. Sure. Uh, you know, uh, IT was a little bit afraid of them. Mm -hmm. But as they've gotten uh, more confidence in the technology, we're now seeing SSDs creeping into to more higher performance applications, uh, and that's where this this type of uh, uh, performance consistency becomes important. So when you talk about latency, is it basically the same techniques as far as uh, you know, extra DRAM and things like that, or is there other stuff to it? It is. So it is larger DRAMs uh, and tuning within the firmware. I would say probably 90% of what smooths out these lines is done in code and firmware. And that's really your guy's IP, Expertise, right? correct. Yeah. And then, so all the script and this experience is really what helps you drive that firmware up, Correct. Right. And that's not something, I guess, I don't 
don't want to say anybody could go get DRAM, but it's that's a lower bar. But if it's custom stuff that you guys are doing, that's got to be a big difference. It is. For you. It is. Okay, great. So let's talk about the uh, sort of the types of uh, technology that's being used. You know, we've got SATA, we've got SAS, we've got NVMe. But what's your, what are you guys doing in those markets? So, um, so if you look at the the the, the market as a whole, uh, we know that about. 80% of the SSDs that go into servers today are still serial ATA. Okay. Uh, there is a, a big movement to get away from these hard drive interfaces mm -hmm. and get to NVMe right. uh, through the PCI Express bus. Right. Um, so all projections are that you know within the next couple of years, uh, we're going to be seeing a major shift away from SATA and SAS to NVMe. Uh, in mainstream servers. And for our viewers that might not be uh, used to that term NVMe, let's let's give them a quick description. Higher command count, uh, higher queue depth, right? And then also uh, the, the PCI interconnect. Those are probably like the big three there, right? Those are the big things, yeah. So we've been building SSDs for the last 10 years on mm -hmm. hard drive technology. Right. And we knew years ago that there was a better interface for SSDs, but we couldn't, we couldn't turn that switch overnight. Right. Uh, and NVMe is that technology today. Uh, that is the, the, the a good interface for SSDs, and the PCI Express bus is the is the connectivity method uh, to attach this, the the drives to this. Systems. So, so let me throw you a curveball. Then it, it would seem to me that as we go to NVMe, the 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 latency can come down more. So yeah. this the scripting and tuning and that firmware work probably becomes even more critical because there's less latency to kind of hide bad code behind. Is that is that a fair assessment? It is. So what we're getting with NVMe is we're getting lower latency and higher I.O. delivery. Right. Um, so what we do on the SATA side of our SSD product line, we also do on the NVMe side. Gotcha. So our criteria for uh, uh, performance consistency delivery is the same whether we're, we're building for a, a SATA interface drive or an NVMe drive. We're just expecting more performance, obviously, out of an NVMe Absolutely. drive. And so that tuning of that firmware just become, is going to become more and more critical as these interfaces continue to improve, right? Correct. Yeah. Okay, great. Well, there you have it. So SSDs do matter, and, and the, the selection you make into your enterprise become increasingly critical. So look for things that are going to help you reduce latency, uh, improve, uh, you know, limit uh, right cliffs and things like that, as well as also look for vendors that are embracing the new interfaces and are able to take advantage of them. Thank you for joining us. I'm George Crump, lead analyst with Storage Switzerland.